How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. It feels good to be back making some videos for you guys. So this is part two of my 3D printing 101 on Makers Muse guide to start and end G-code scripts. So if you haven't seen part one, definitely go check the video out where I describe what start and end G-code scripts are in your slicer and how you can sort of better understand them and manipulate them to get the best results possible out of your 3D printer. But this is part two where I want to take some ideas from a current profile within Simplify 3D and then transfer it to another profile I'm using to see if I can transfer what I like out of that start G-code into the start G-code of that other printer. So let's get started. Alrighty, so here I have a profile for the original Prusa i3 Mark II in Simplify 3D, which uh, was given to me by Spannerhand, so big thanks to those guys, it's working very well. So with the Prusa i3 Mark II, before every print, it does what's called a purge line by using this profile, and that means it will do a line of plastic to get the, the nozzle primed and ready to print, and then it will go on and start printing. And I really like that idea. It works well. It make, means the nozzle's got plastic in it ready to flow as soon as the print starts. But my current i3 profile for the Wanhao i3 doesn't do that. So I want to take that idea and then push it forwards into my i3 profile for the Wanhao. So let's go into the process for the, uh, the Prusa i3. And under scripts, here we have the starting script for the Prusa i3 Mark II. So let's go through it. Basically, we start with G28. So, as I explained in my previous video, this is a home. So, it's going to home the machine to 000. Now, the profile here does actually have some things that are unique to the Prusa i3 Mark II, and that is G80. That is mesh bed leveling, which is a fantastic way to make sure the nozzle's got the correct distance, even if the bed's not perfectly flat. It's actually really cool, and it works very well on the Prusa i3 Mark II, but the Wanhao i3 doesn't have that feature. So, that's not something I'm going to be looking forward to transferring. It's these next lines that I care about. So, here we have G1, Y minus 3, F1000. So what that's going to do, it's a movement command, G1. So it's going to move the nozzle to Y minus 3 outside of the print area in absolute uh, coordinates. So you start at 0, it's going to move to minus 3. And then it's going to do the next line, G1, X60. It's going to move it to X60 coordinate and also E9, which means it's going to start extruding some plastic. So it's doing that at F1000, which is uh, in millimeters per minute. And then it's going to continue. So it's got G1, X100, E12.5, and then F1000 again. So it's going to do another little bit of that purge line. Then the print will start. So I really like this idea, and I want to transfer it to my profile for the Wanhao i3. So let's fire up that profile. So my Wanhao i3 version 2 is pretty heavily modified. It's got a print byte surface and a Flexion extruder. So it's pretty heavily modified from stock. So I've made my own pro process that I use all the time. But under scripts, all I have for the starting script is G28. And that's the default. If you make a custom profile in Simplify 3D, it'll stick G28 in, but that's it. You've got nothing else to play with. So I'm going to take what I learned in the Prusa i3 Mark II and transfer it into this profile. So what I'm going to do is a move command G1. So I'm going to enter G1 here. And then I, what I want to do is basically I want to move the nozzle out of the print area slightly. So what you would have seen in the Prusa i3 Mark II profile starting script is it had Y minus 3. Now some machines won't let you move out of the, the bounds of the, the print area, but some will. So this may not work for yours. You may have to just do uh, happy be happy with 0. But I'm going to try Y minus 3. I'm going to do Y minus 3.0 just to make sure I'm being accurate here. So I've got the decimal point. You don't want to be uh, misplacing a decimal point or anything like that. So it's just a good way to make sure you're putting the right numbers in. So Y minus 3. And it had a, f a feed rate of 1000 before. It's quite fast on the Prusa. I think the because the design of the Flexion doesn't quite like those high speeds at low temperatures, at least in my experience, I'm going to try doing F500.0, which may be... Yeah, let's do a capital, which may be a little bit slow, but oh well, let's find out. And then I'm going to do a semicolon, which is again a comment, so you can comment things to let people know what you're doing. So I'm going to do uh, move out of print volume, volume, right? And then I'm going to do another move command, G1. This time I'm going to start moving across the to the x coordinate. So we saw x60. I'm going to steal that completely. Let's do x60.0. And then we're going to start extruding stuff. So extruding is E. So I'm going to do E. And I'm going to do E9. So so this may vary depending on your printer, but E9 is going to move 9 millimeters. But 
remove nine millimeters of plastic, if that makes sense. So <laughs> let's go E9 and then again F uh, 500. So it's going to do start purge line and then finally G1 X 100.0 and then I don't remember what the other extruded one was the previous one so I'm going to do E14 maybe might be a little bit much that's I think oh it's 12.5 E 12.5 I'm just going to copy it exactly and again let's just do F 500.0 finish purge line right so what I've got there I'm going to double check my code so we've got G28 home all axes G1 Y minus 3 move out of the build volume by minus 3 F500, again, I'm going half the speed the Prusa one was at, but I don't mind going a bit slower there. Move outside of print volume. G1, X60, move to coordinates for X at 60. E9, start pretty much start extruding as it moves. And F500, and then G1, X100, E12.5, and again, F500, finish the purge line. So I'm going to send that to my Wanhao i3, and let's see how it looks. So thanks for watching guys, hope you found this follow-up video on start and end G-code scripts handy. Again, they're very, very powerful and useful features, but this is by no means meant to be a crash course into how to like program in G-code. That's a far more complicated topic. But if you are interested, definitely watch the first video where I go into the different commands in a little bit more depth and look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.